The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the fourth in our series of five webinars on pavement sustainability. My name is Kurt Smith and along with Tom Van Dam will be serving as the hosts and moderators for today's webinar. In our presentation topic for today, we will be looking at sustainability considerations as they apply to asphalt and concrete pavement maintenance and preservation, asphalt and concrete recycling, and other end of pavement life strategies. I would like to remind everyone that this webinar series is sponsored by the Federal Highway Administration and focuses on the information contained in the race recently released FHWA publication Towards Sustainable Pavement Systems, a reference document, which can be downloaded at the link shown on the screen. We are presenting a series of webinars over a five-month period to highlight some of the key aspects of the reference document, and each of these webinars is being recorded for later, later posting on the FHWA website. The formal presentation part of the webinar is scheduled to go for about one hour and 40 minutes in order to allow about 20 minutes for questions at the end of the webinar. You are welcome to submit questions at any time during the webinar and you may do so by using the chat box, chat box feature on the webinar platform. Be sure to access the drop down feature in the chat box and select send questions to staff as shown in the screenshot. We will then compile all of those questions and address them at the end of the webinar. Also please note that we will be providing two hours of professional development hours in the form of a PDH certificate for each registered attendee. But understand that these are different than continuing education units. You will want to check with your professional licensing uh, organization for applicability of PDH credit for your specific situation. Our speakers for today's webinar include Gina Alstrom with FHWA, Tom Van Dam with NCE, Imad al Qadi and Hassan Ozer with the University of Illinois, and Mark Snyder, Engineering Consultant. Again, my name is Kurt Smith, and along with Tom Van Dam, we'll be moderating this webinar. So now let's begin our webinar by hearing first from Gina Alstrom who will be providing some background on FHWA's Sustainable Pavements Program. Gina? Thank you, Kurt. The U.S. DOT is committed to advancing sustainability in all aspects of transportation. Secretary Anthony Fox signed a policy statement in June of 2014 that demonstrated this commitment. We are encouraged to consider sustainability in our policies, operations, investments, and research. In 2010, the FHWA established the Sustainable Pavements Program. The program goals are to support the US DOT goals for sustainability, increase the body of knowledge regarding sustainability of asphalt and concrete materials throughout the pavement life cycle, Increase the use of sustainable technologies and practices in pavement design, construction, preservation, and maintenance. The first order of business under the program was to define what sustainability means in terms of pavements and materials. It is necessary to give practitioners guidance and clarification on how pavements and materials fits into the broader context of sustainability. The document towards sustainable pavements, a reference document, is just that. It's a reference. It provides guidelines for the design, construction, preservation, and maintenance of sustainable pavements using asphalt and concrete materials, educates practitioners on how sustainability concepts can be incorporated into pavements, and encourages the adoption of these practices. We are focusing on what we can do today to incorporate sustainable practices into our pavements. The document provides a review of current literature specific to pavement sustainability. We had an extensive review of the document with input from a broad range of stakeholders. Rest assured that this is comprehensive and benchmarks pavement sustainability today 
and helps us look to improving and moving that benchmark in the future. Sustainability is a journey and not a destination. Kurt, I'll turn it back to you. Not sure if Kurt is talking. Then Tom, I'll turn it over to you. All right. I guess I'll go right ahead. Um, I'm going to uh, briefly introduce the ideas of how pavement preservation supports sustainability. Uh, and then also, very quickly, uh, talk about some of the techniques and those maybe that are, that are most um, relevant to supporting a, a sustainable approach to pavements. It's a good place to start always with this uh, particular chart, uh, the triple bottom line, in which we look at economic growth, environmental stewardship, and social progress, and look at how those uh, different goals intersect, and how in the middle is that real sweet spot. And I think when we uh, look at uh, preservation, in general, what you're going to see is that preservation is one of these uh, areas that it fits squarely right in the middle. If we uh, look at that life cycle consideration as we uh, consider preservation, you'll see that you have design, your material choices, construction. Uh, we've talked about these already in uh, previous uh, webinars. Uh, later we're going to talk about operations. But then you have that whole area of preservation before we get into the end of this talk, which is the idea of uh, reconstruction recycling. So when we think about pavement uh, preservation sustainability, the visibility of, of pavement preservation really continues to rise. Um, budgets uh, nationwide remain very, very tight. Um, it doesn't matter if you're at a local agency all the way at a state DOT. Everybody is really trying to make their dollar go further. And so preservation activities, um, which are typically low cost and have the opportunity to really extend the life of pavement, um, are, are really quite attractive. This uh, consideration of the pavement life cycle, as I mentioned, is, is really key. The idea here is that we will design and construct pavements to be uh, quite, uh, have quite a bit of longevity. And then we can apply these preservation treatments throughout the, the life to, to keep a, a good pavement in good condition. Uh, there's been research done uh, as published in, in CHRP uh, Project uh, 148 report. But what uh, is very common these days is when you look at some of these design, build, operate P3 projects in which the, the, the contracting team is not only responsible for the design and the construction of the project, but also the operation, the discussions that happen in that environment uh, as they relate to um, how to not just build or design and build this pavement, but how are we going to maintain this? It's very, very, uh, it, it makes it clear the linkage between uh, uh, these different phases. And what I've discovered is that tollways in general are also very cognizant of this link, where you, they're always thinking about um, they can't afford shutdowns, they can't afford lane closures, because that affects their bottom line. And so as we more closely link um, the designed build and operate process, we will see that uh, preservation really rises to the top. So again, what we're looking at here is taking good roads and maintaining them in good condition. And uh, so you're not waiting until bad things happen and trying to fix it. You're basically um, just maintaining that, uh, that pavement system, hopefully until uh, you know, until you get a very good long design life. And so instead of, you know, here this represents a typical pavement deterioration curve. And I say typical in the sense that quite idealistic. But what we're trying to do with preservation is keep in this really good condition and then just bounce up and down with the preservation techniques and maintaining, uh, as, you, as you'll see, different functional qualities of the pavement uh, that meet the needs of the user. It is widely stated, believed, uh, and research that's been done has shown that really preservation is inherently sustainable. Uh, we start with good design, good construction, and simply maintain. The treatments that are commonly utilized are low cost, they have low environmental impact, 
uh, generally low impact on uh, the user, uh, in and out type of techniques. And they can uh, they conserve energy in, in virgin materials. So the less material that we're using, the less intervention going on. Uh, we're, we're really um, not only saving money, but we're also conserving energy in, in, in virgin materials. And very common things that I like to think about when I think about preservation is you buy an old house and it has an old hardwood floor and you get in there and you can refinish that floor and you can make it new again. Or you know you buy a nice piece of Damascus steel and a knife and just keep that, uh, that knife sharp. And so that's really what we're trying to do is ride that edge of, of good performance. So when we look at preservation techniques, what we're really talking about here is restoring and maintaining functionality. We're not adding uh, structurally to the pavement. Instead, what we're doing is we're focused on the, where the rubber meets the road. Uh, we're looking at things like safety, skid, uh, uh, visibility of markings. We're looking at potentially noise. Uh, we're looking at uh, making uh, maybe a rough pavement uh, smoother to improve fuel efficiency and potentially enhancing aesthetics, making something that could be old and worn have a, a fresh look about it. There are many little things that we can do, many techniques, but ultimately as we, we place those techniques onto the scale, we'll see that they add up and, and, and have big, big savings. Things to consider, and, and by no means is, 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 am, I trying, am I going to be able to give you a, a whole short course on preservation. That would actually take a couple of days. But what we're looking at here, uh, uh, these are treatments that are cost effective, um, you know, has been widely investigated and broadly accepted. Almost there's broad recognition of the importance of this. Uh, you have to consider really the impact of that preservation treatment on, on traffic, maintenance of traffic on the community around it. Other things to consider include uh, the level of improvement and longevity. Uh, these are very, very closely linked to construction quality and original design. So, you know, trying to preserve something that is, starts uh, its life um, uh, with a short lifespan or poorly constructed is much more difficult. And there is currently a lack of life cycle inventory data for many preservation activities, especially those proprietary treatments. So although we, we often believe that preservation has this inherent uh, sustainable element to it, uh, sometimes, especially as we get into some of the more proprietary treatments, it's difficult to demonstrate. Different types of applications in general is in low volume roads. What we see is that um, we can uh, the reduced impacts due to vehicle operation. You know, there's there's not as much impact on vehicle operations, and so at this point, the agency impacts really dominate the decision making process. So, an agency that's maintaining uh, many low volume roads, uh, their costs um, very closely follow the sustainability costs or benefits. So, you know, minimize treatment applications and the amount of material used for each treatment. Uh, optimize treatment selection and timing to avoid major structural damage. And so the, the criteria that is being applied for a low volume road network very closely parallels the very basic economic model that an agency uses the, as, because the impact on users is, is minimal. As we move to high volume roads, what you see is that the use phase, which we'll discuss in the next webinar, becomes increasingly important and will often become the dominant decision, uh, you know, influence on this decision making process. And so here you have agencies that are managing budgets and you have their, their impact uh, is relatively small compared to that on, on the vehicle operations. And so this is a very complex problem in which agencies need to factor in user impact uh, far more closely. And so uh, together, uh, this is where preservation gets a little bit, uh, it may deviate where user or agency costs and user's costs can be different. One way to look at this is maybe a simple chart uh, this is uh, published by uh, Leidecker in 2013, in which they, they looked at maybe different intervals at which we overlay. If we overlay every 10 years, for example, versus every 30 years, what you see is that the agency um, emissions will obviously decrease, right? 
you'll uh, end up if you delay uh, from a pure agency perspective, there will be savings the further we push that into the future. On the other hand, as we let the road uh, condition deteriorate and the pavement becomes rougher, uh, costs to the users increase. And then there is a sweet spot in this example that you can discover right around 22 years in which the IRI is such uh, is uh, higher than it would be if we maintained it more often, but it's where the maximum uh, reduction in emissions, total emissions occurs. And so this, this is one way to, to kind of look at this broader balance between agency and, and user generated emissions. When we look at agency uh, costs versus user costs, agencies are typically focused right on minimizing their own life cycle cost. This, uh, as mentioned, this works very well for low volume roads as this strategy also really almost aligns perfectly with uh, broader sustainability goals. But as we move to those higher volume pavements, the agencies need to somehow factor in those broader uh, sustainability impacts and, and how the user is really impacted. And so things like smooth pavements, um, keeping smooth pavements smooth, safe pavements safe, quiet pavements quiet, the more traffic using a pavement, the more acute uh, these uh, considerations become. And so uh, that's where we really uh, can need to focus a lot more work. There are many, many techniques available in pavement preservation and, and more getting developed all the time. Uh, multiple resources are available to educate uh, you on this and uh, continuing edu uh, education classes are available. Uh, it's very common to see classes on uh, preservation of asphalt pavements, preservation of concrete pavements, really focused on the techniques. And so, you know, we don't get into that uh, in this presentation and we won't get into that in the manual. But things that, uh, in general, that you have to consider is the pavement type, the type and extent of distress, the climate, the cost, expected life and functional requirements. Those are all very important considerations as well as maintenance of traffic, the type of traffic loading, and, and, and really for some of these techniques, contractor material availability is critical. As mentioned, uh, these are generally believed to be inherently sustainable, but quantification is still emerging. Details of treatment type, including materials, construction, intensity, placement frequency are important. And really, we're focused, again, on functional improvement, particularly with regards to smoothness. That's a, these are very, very important things from a sustainability perspective. Multiple techniques are available, as I said. Um, I'm going to go through some of them pretty quickly. Uh, the text in the manual does cover um, positives and potential negatives for each of these strategies. And so I would direct you there for more information and then ultimately to other resources on how to apply these techniques. When we look at some isolated uh, repairs for, for asphalt pavements, you have things like crack sealing and, and uh, patching. Um, you know, often these can, uh, are, are there to enhance ride quality, but sometimes they can actually be detrimental depending on the type of crack sealing, for example, that's done or, or how smooth a patch is constructed. As we move to broader treatments uh, versus the localized, you can have things like a fog seal or a chip seal. Uh, these are most often used for uh, low volume uh, roadways and, and they can be very effective at extending life and uh, enhancing that, the functional characteristic of the surface. Things that we're seeing more and more uh, are like slurry seals, microsurfacing. Uh, these are very, very common in which uh, we, we take an asphalt emulsion, for example, with a, a blend of fine sand and mineral filler. And, and really can uh, significantly seal that surface, correct some minor um, uh, surface irregularities, restore uh, functionality, uh, really brings a nice aesthetic surface. And so these are very common techniques to use. What we're seeing more on higher volume roads are this movement towards ultra thin asphalt overlays or thin asphalt overlays in which we're looking at five eighths to three quarter inch thicknesses up to maybe a half, one and a half inches. And then sometimes even things like ultra-thin bonded wearing courses, uh, more of a proprietary type of treatment, are becoming a very common uh, preservation technique in which we can do a micro mill and replacement of a surface on a 